Hello, everyone. I'm Rachel with The Daily Signal. I'm joined today by Kaylee McEnany, who's the national spokeswoman for the RNC. And she's going to talk to me a little about the Trump administration and, you know, how she's experienced in seeing um, the, our president's work. So you call the President Donald Trump a great negotiator. What have you seen in this first year? Um, just the highlights that stand out to you. Oh, there's so much. So it's hard to pick one thing. But I think uh, the obvious thing that comes to mind is the recent North Korea summit. You know, so many presidents have tried to solve this problem. None have been able to. But President Trump, in the span of three months, he announced this meeting with Kim Jong-un on May 8th. Three months, we've seen the release of three U.S. hostages, the destruction of a nuclear test facility, the vow to destroy a missile test facility in North Korea, um, and the vow to denuclearize. All in three months. That, by definition, is the great negotiator. And so uh, we've seen the, with the tax cuts as well, small businesses in this country benefiting hugely from that. What would you say as well to the Trump administration's experience with women, with elevating women in the administration? We've seen with Gina Haspel as the first woman CIA director. What do you see in that and how it goes against the mainstream media's narrative? completely destroys the mainstream media narrative when you have women like Kellyanne Conway, the first successful campaign manager of a U.S. presidential campaign, Sarah Sanders, the first mother to stand behind that podium, Hope Hicks, the youngest uh, female communications director. You know, these are all strong women that President Trump has elevated. You mentioned Gina Haspel. I think there's no greater example than that one. He's elevated women all throughout his administration, and the mainstream media doesn't want to cover it because it destroys their narrative. The House will be voting this week, probably this coming week, on immigration and working in the RNC and promoting a conservative message. What are some key points and must-haves that you see that must be part of any immigration legislation? Well, we have to have border security. And you look, uh, there was a recent um, operation called Matador, where there were 274, <clears throat> excuse me, MS-13 gang members uh, who were captured. Big deal, a good thing. MS-13 is obviously a violent gang. But of those 274 uh, who they got off the streets, 100 of them were, came to this country disguised as unaccompanied minors. So while we are a very benevolent country, we want immigrants. We welcome one million a year more than any country in the developed world. We're a generous country. We also need to be a safe country. And that means making sure these gang members don't cross the border and ravage the lives of U.S. citizens and U.S. children. What do you say uh, and see also is the importance of a border wall? We've seen that was something that Trump campaigned on extensively, and it's been a popular item with immigration around the country, too. Do you think that's something we'll see included in legislation? No doubt about it. You know, I'm so proud of the president for being firm on this. He has said that any immigration deal, any DACA deal needs to include border wall funding. And we've come a long way. Now they're working in the House on a bill that would include that border wall funding also a DACA deal. So I think we're getting closer and closer, but a conservative bill is one that includes both. Uh, it's one uh, that addresses the border problem, but is also compassionate towards DACA recipients. So somewhere in the middle, we will find our, our perfect resolution, but it's got to include the border wall. And last question for you. Before um, joining the RNC as their spokesperson, you worked as a CNN commentator. What has it been your experience working like in media and conservative media and then now with the RNC? Yeah, it's been exciting. You know, it's very interesting to go into the really the battles and the heart of the mainstream media and fight out the case for the president against seven, eight commentators on CNN. Um, now that I'm at the RNC, it's so exciting because I feel like I'm among allies and friends. I had a lot of friends on a personal level at CNN, but ideologically speaking, couldn't have been farther apart um, from my fellow commentators. And to be at the RNC surrounded by conservatives who are passionate, who are excited. It's just a real honor and a real pleasure and a real joy uh, to show up at work every day and be around conservatives and push forward what I think will be the most historic and, and successful presidency in modern history. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.